a very good uh, good afternoon to all of you at the outset i would like to thank um, dr partha biswas sir chairman scientific committee aios and dr rajiv gupta sir for giving me an opportunity to part, to be the part of this instruction course uh, the first report of a surgical treatment of uh, tridium is more than 3000 years old and over the years a myriad of surgical techniques have been devised to tackle the tridium but none has achieved a complete success in efficacy and safety The technique of bare steroid excision alone has largely been abandoned because of its unacceptably high recurrence rates. The high recurrence rates associated with tridium surgery continue to be a problem and thus adjunctive therapies have been incorporated into the management of tridium. And studies have shown that recurrence rates have dropped considerably with the addition of these therapies. The bare scleral technique had been modified in an attempt to reduce the recurrence rate. The modified bare scleral technique was based on the understanding of the important role of normal conjunctiva in blocking pterygium regrowth on the corneal surface. However, none of these modifications were able to achieve acceptable recurrence rates in the long term. Both these studies described a new technique in which a thin layer of conjunctival graft was fashioned from the pterygium tissue. In this study by Sanjay Chaudhary et al the graft was rotated by 180 degrees the investigators thought that by ro rotating the graft in such a way that the disease epithelium at the limbal end was shifted away to prevent recurrence in the other study by Kodavur et al the graft was not rotated here the investigators believed that limbus to limbus orientation might not be necessarily maintained to avoid recurrence and the graft should be adequate enough to cover the bare steroid defect irrespective of its orientation In this technique a narrow 2 mm wide free conjunctival epithelial autograft was fashioned from the superior bulbar conjunctiva a 1 to 2 mm zone of undisturbed conjunctiva was preserved posterior to the limbus to ensure that the limbal stem cells were not violated the graft and the residual conjunctival margin was sutured in a way that allowed a 2 to 3 mm 3 mm zone of bare sclera between the two here the investigators believe that this approach provides for wider adjacent conjunctival margins for preservation of limbal stem cells on one side and avoidance of incursion into the superior fornix and superior rectus insertion on the other side in this in innovative technique an amniotic membrane graft was placed on the bare sclera a crescent blade was then used to create a 2 by 2 mm strip of limbal tissue by dissecting from the conjunctival side into the cornea This limbal tissue was then then cut into eight to ten smaller pieces with one half scissors, and then these pieces were glued along the conjunctival side of the limbus over the previously fixed amniotic membrane. These limbal tissue pieces were again were protected with a smaller glued amniotic membrane overlay. The investigators argued that the addition of these stem cells could reduce recurrence rate and, as a result, improve the cosmetic outcome. In the study from China, ologen was placed. under the conjunctival flap leaving a 2 mm wide area of bare sclera at the limbus in this study ologen was used as a spacer to mechanically separate the subconjunctival tissue and the episcleral tissue to prevent fibrosis however the study concluded that there was no statistically significant difference between the ologen group and the conjunctival autograft group with respect to pterygium recurrence Many studies have uh, documented that it is the friction between the islets and the corneal and the conjunctival wounds that could stimulate the healing process and could also also cause wound dehiscence which may increase the risk of recurrence. In this study to reduce the friction induced inflammation the investigators pr uh, protected the conjunctival autograft with an amniotic membrane overlay in addition they also used contact lenses to cover the cornea and the conjunctiva during the initial early post operative period. In this Cochrane systematic review of 20 randomized controlled trials in which a total of 1947 eyes of 1866 participants were analyzed the reviewers compared the effects of conjunctival autograft relative to an amniotic membrane transplantation with respect to pterygium recurrence at 3 and 6 months after surgery the 3 months recurrence rates were similar for both groups based on data from 538 eyes in 6 rcts and pterygium recurrence rate 6 months after the surgery were much lower in the conjunctival autograft group Then in the amniotic membrane transplant group based on data from 1021 eyes in 10 RCTs a spit graft can be used to cover large conjunctival defects created in double head pterygium multi recurrent pterygium is complicated due to the exaggerated proliferative tendency represented by active fibroplasia wound contraction and angiogenic sprouting 
Two main perioperative strategies are essential to relax the exaggerated hyperproliferation. The first is to minimize the post-operative inflammation, which may prolong proliferation and angiogenesis. The second is to maximize the ablation of residual fibroblasts in the surgical wound area. For the management of multi-recurrent complicated pterygium, different types of modalities of treatment have been tried and used, but it is the combination of approaches that works best in such cases. Over the last 25 years, Professor Lawrence Hurst from Australia has developed a surgical procedure known as PERFECT, which is the short form of pterygium extended removal followed by extended conjunctival transplant. This technique has reduced the uh, uh, recurrence rates from 10% to 15%, usually described in the literature to 0.1%, along with excellent cosmetic results. The procedure is done in three logical steps. First, pterygium and extensive uh, tenon removal. Second, retrieval of a very large and very thin graft. And finally, the reconstruction of the pterygium site. This study reports the largest single prospective series of recurrent pterygium remo removal with a one-year minimum follow-up in the scientific literature. With a zero recurrence rate and excellent cosmetic uh, results, Professor Hurst claims that perfect surgery for pterygium seems to provide the best surgical answer for recurrent pterygia. This is an, another paper by Professor Hurst, which was published in the Journal of Thermology in 2012. Here also, Professor Hurst reported a very low recurrence rate, a good cosmetic appearance, and an acceptable complication rate with the perfect technique. Laminar ketoplasty has been used to replace the thinning and the corneal scarring seen after pterygium surgery. The main limitations are the need for donor corneal tissue with the attendant risks of graft rejection and transmission of an infection, as well as the increased complexity of the procedure. However, laminar ketoplasty does not appear to provide any special advantage in preventing the pterygium recurrence. The combination of conjunctival autografting and amniotic membrane grafting has been used in recurrent pterygium with restriction of movements. In these cases, amniotic membrane is used to cover the muscle to prevent fibrosis and restriction of movements, while the conjunctival autograft is used to close the defect from the pterygium tissue. This is relatively an old case report of uh, three patients who had repeated pterygium surgery and who eventually had split thickness buccal mucosal uh, membrane grafting combined with beta irrad irradiation with good results. In this prospective clinical trial from, uh, from South Korea, the investigators performed pterygium excision with intraoperative insertion of multi-microporous expanded polytetrafluoroethylene sheet into the subconjunctival space at the nasal caruncle. Multiple micropores were created in the sheet to enable the passage of oxygen uh, from the air to the surgical wound in order to prevent hypoxia-induced scar formation during the initial proliferative phase of wound healing. In this study, the multi-microporous expanded polytetrafluoroethylene sheet insertion technique combined with conventional surgical methods showed a 3.3% recurrence rate. Dr. Shepard and his team came up with this table and suggested that the surgical procedure selected depends primarily on the clinical presentation and the complexity of the pterygium. So what the future holds in store for us in pterygium surgery? This study, quite a recent one, reports the outcomes of the first clinical trial on the use of femtosecond laser to prepare conjunctival autograft in pterygium surgery and to compare the outcomes with those of manual technique. Studies have shown that achieving an ultra-thin conjunctival autograft requires a considerable surgical skill and is associated with a substantial learning curve. Approximately 50 attempts were required for a trainee to achieve a conjunctival autograft thickness of 87 microns. The femtosecond laser technique may be valuable in overcoming the learning curve it also allows reliable, accurate, and consistent ultra-thin conjunctival autograph preparation. This study was also associated with low complication rate, low recurrence rate, minimal discomfort, good cosmetic appearance, and comparable surgical time, as well as visual and refractive outcomes with conventional manual technique. Radio frequency, also known as radio surgery, is a non-traumatic method of cutting and coagulating soft tissues using a high-frequency electric current. In this study, a, frequency, a radio frequency unit was used to harvest conjunctival autographs. After a follow-up of, of, of at least 12 months, the incidence of recurrence was less than 5%. Extracellular matrix serves as a scaffold on which new conjunctival growth can be constructed and facilitates anatomical and functional reconstruction to reduce pterygium recurrence. Use of extracellular matrix offers several advantages and is most suitable for patients with a limited conjunctival reserve or those that may undergo a future glaucoma surgery. 
In an alternative approach to increasing precision, Boschetti and his team investigated the use of robot-assisted pterygium surgery in a porcine model and recently in a patient. While they found the procedure to be feasible and no complications occurred, the surgery time still limits its application in routine clinical cases. In particular, the congenital autograph preparation time in the porcine model took substantially longer time than femtosecond laser-assisted grafts or manual dissection. So finally, to take my take-home message, direct comparison among studies remain difficult because of the differences in the technique of pterygium excision, duration, and types of adjuvant therapies used. Regarding pterygium excision, there is presently no agreement on the best method of excision. Excision alone without adjuvant treatment is now no longer acceptable. It is accepted that various adjuvant therapies and the combinations have significant, significantly improved the treatment outcome in terms of recurrence, cosmetics, and patient satisfaction. Many surgeons believe that using mitomycin C and congenital autograph technique provides the most satisfactory results. Of these two, congenital autograph is preferred because of the long-term safety concerns. Thank you for your kind listening.